Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness. As uh, most of you know, we've been working our butts off nonstop on that cabin behind us and we're ready for a break. So we're gonna head up to Denali National Park. We got a very hard to get road permit for Ielson Visitor Center. So we get to drive the park road tomorrow. Awesome. trip off right and uh, we're out of beer so we're stopping at the brewery on the way to get a couple six packs <clears throat> and that's how you start your trip off right huh honey yeah Denali Denali Brewing Company on our way to Denali <laughs> yeah I think we're set now for three days <laughs> we don't normally drink this much just happened to come by and they have six packs. It'll last a few weeks. captive audience apparently I cannot move so what was the question why are we relaxing instead of moving the RV today? oh why are we chilling out right now uh, we got super lucky so last night lucky not lucky but we last night we were supposed to stay at uh, Denali Grizzly Bear Resort about mile 231 so it's about six miles south of the Denali Park entrance and totally by totally passed it by because there was no signs previous so there was no place to turn around so we came uh into denali national park i stopped at the ruddy creek mercantile which is where you're supposed to check in and we decided you know so it was dumping rain and we decided to give it a try and see if we can find a fourth night we already had three nights reserved at savage river and uh i went in to, to see if we could at the very least um check in for tonight's camping and see if they had an additional night last night and she says oh no we're all full I'm like oh it's too bad I saw earlier that there was you know kind of a spot here or there maybe at Riley Creek and and uh she's like no we're awful I'm like okay so we were gonna head back to Denali Grizzly Bear Resort but I went online because they actually have cell service down there and I'm like, hey, this says online that there is actually a night here at Savage River. And I told her that, she goes, hmm. Huh. So she looks online, she goes, oh yeah, there is. So anyway, we got four nights at Savage River Campground in Denali National Park. And if I'm gonna give you any advice at all, uh, if you need, if you wanna make reservations for Riley Creek, Teclanica, or Savage River, it's the three places in the park that you can camp with an RV that uh, do so when the uh, reservations open and I'm not sure if it's um, six months in advance uh, we were really lucky we we got a road road permit for Ielsen later today and we were wanting Savage River but everything was booked up when I made campground reservations and I just kept trying I'm like well people cancel all the time the weather wasn't looking that hot this weekend so yeah within a, a few days of uh, getting here I just kept checking and and then I got the, the initial three nights at Savage River. And there's a few nights here and there at Riley Creek. And there was even some available at Teclanica. So that would be a really great spot. If you do camp in Teclanica, you can do the Tech Pass. And it's a bus pass that you can get. Uh, if you do camp at Teclanica, you can't drive your, once you're there, you can't drive your, your vehicle uh, on the park road. So you're there and then you have to take the, the bus. 
Whee, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go into Denali National Park. Hey, we're there in Denali National Park. And we're super excited. We got a really, really, really hard to get pass. Because of the pandemic, there's a, a pretty unique opportunity that we get to take advantage of. Uh, because they didn't want to have the buses packed full of people and honestly there's not that many tourists in Alaska anyway but they allow are allowing a certain amount of people uh, on certain weekends to actually drive on the park road to a couple different spots so we got the farthest pass to Eielson Visitor Center uh, these passes as Rhonda knows saw me multiple times trying to get a pass it was really hard to get they don't have that many passes for each uh, timed. They have them timed at like eight, nine, 10. Uh, we were able to get the two o'clock one, which is the last one of the day, not ideal, but it's better than nothing. So anyway, they're letting cars in, it looks like over there. So we're gonna hop back in our truck and go tour the park today in our own vehicle, yay. We made it up to the top of Polychrome Pass and driving, I've, I have driven out, I've gotten the road lottery that they do in September a couple of times in the past and uh, driving up Polychrome Pass around the bends, white knuckle the whole way because the turns are pretty, pretty hairpin, but this is amazing. Hey, we made it to Eielson Visitor Center. It's at mile 66 of the Denali National Park Road. The whole road, like I said earlier, is 90 some miles. It goes out to Kantishna, but this is as far as we're allowed to go. So that way, that would be where Denali is. It's actually, <laughs> yeah, so if you see the ridge of mountains back here, if, you, if that were actually the lower third of Denali, think in terms of two more thirds taller than that where you would actually see Denali. <laughs> a big white peak back there <laughs> behind all those clouds. That's how much taller it is than all the surrounding stuff. And <laughs> as much as I've been in the park, I, like I said, I did the road lottery twice and did the bus tour with my mom out to Kantishna. I did a shorter bus tour with my stepmom, probably done another one or a few bus tours. And then my time as an aviation mechanic in Talkeetna, I've landed in airplanes on the uh, Ruth and Kehiltna Glacier. So I've spent a lot of time in this park and I've actually only seen Denali from the north side once. And I'll, I'll uh, throw in a picture of that because it was absolutely stunning and gorgeous, but very, very few people get to see it. Haven't seen much wildlife coming up here, mm. but, the, but it's still been a stunning drive. Yeah, we saw one grizzly, but it was way, way, way off in the distance and only because a bus driver pointed it out to us. And we're actually in the Tundra Loop Trail at Eielson Visitor Center. Just short, just half a mile. Um, because we got the two o'clock time slot, we have to be back out at Savage River by nine o'clock and doesn't really give us much time to stop and do some hiking and that. It took us three hours to get here. We'll have time to chill out here for a little bit, head back and maybe see some wildlife, take more photos, who knows. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, 50 miles, but when you're going anywhere between 10 to 35 miles an hour, it definitely mm -hmm. takes time. A lot of stopping. Yeah, a lot of stopping. You have to stop for eastbound traffic. Oh. Oh, let's go do this trail. What was the bear doing? Uh, first he was eating grass. Then he was rubbing his butt, and then he dug himself a flat space in the mud to sleep. Kind of like our dogs do. Yes, very so much like our dogs. Blankets. 
Yeah, so we just saw two grizzlies. We had two different stops and finally we got some wildlife viewing. We're not sure how the pictures turned out. Uh, we can't use a, we can't get out of the vehicle, so we can't use a tripod or that big, huge, heavy 400 millimeter lens on my Canon. So it might be a little blurry. We'll see when we get back home. But anyway, exciting. We were starting to feel a little skunked by the lack of wildlife, but you know, that's wildlife for you. They just don't come out on demand. Go figure. Hey, we're going for a nice little walk in our campground at Savage River. Feels like state of Washington. Feels like Washington in the rain. <laughs> uh, this is Denali National Park for you. Never know what the weather's gonna do. I did see a very fun st statistic at Ielson Visitor Center when we were there the other day. And they said for the month of July, the amount of days that Denali was out totally, like totally visible, was two. The amount of days that uh, was not visible at all was 18 and the amount of partially visible days was 11 or was it the opposite well the big the big one was only two days of the entire month so two days and then the rest of them were not at all or partially pretty fun huh <laughs> not fun if you're a tourist and you have your heart set on it but yeah, I think you're better off seeing it from the south side anyway and Talkeetna it's out a little bit more than that so uh, this campground we really really like it's quiet uh, there's recycling so it's actually really easy to recycle your stuff here easier than most places we've been which is kind of surprising and of course they've got the the bear lockers if you're tent camping and bear proof garbage containers uh, they don't have any ranger programs going on right now at this campground or pretty much most of the park and visitor center the main one was closed as well so hopefully next summer if any of you come it'll be much more back to normal hopefully it's uh, definitely been an interesting experience here with a lot less people less bus traffic but, uh, which is good, probably for wildlife viewing. And we did get to see a moose yesterday, which is cool. Right next we'll show to the some road. video of that. Yeah, right next to the road. Up close and personal. Blitz. And Blitz is going to go check out the food locker. Oh, he's snacking. Oh, Blitz, come on. Anything else we should add about the oh, campground? There's, well, there's lots of uh, trails. So yeah, there's a nice interpretive trail that and it has some cool pictures of the history here and the tent camps that are here, that were here. Pretty flat and wide, so yeah. um, I would say potentially you could take a wheelchair on them. Yeah, I think so. And unfortunately the trail we did want to do, the Savage Alpine Loop, is closed because dangerous bear activity. So we're going to try to find a different hike to do today. Okay, so some important information in case you are RVing here that at Riley Creek at the park entrance, that's where the dump station is, and that's where you want to fill your tanks at. They have potable water here, but they don't want you to fill your holding tanks with that, and uh, it's pretty good water. Oh. Important stuff. I almost forgot. It's okay water. Rhonda thinks it's okay. <laughs> it has a little chlorine taste to it, but not bad. <laughs> we're used to no flavor water at all. Yummy. I think you were smart to put mosquito repellent on because now I'm getting <laughs> I was laughing at Rhonda for putting mosquito repellent on because there's hardly been any mosquitoes here but as soon as I said that now I'm getting inundated with mosquitoes so we're gonna do the Rock Creek Trail we were gonna do Mount Healy which is about 2.7 miles one way and about 1700 foot elevation gain but uh, it's actually pretty socked in today and I have a feeling once we get up there it would be you know, kind of cloudy and we'd be in the clouds. So we're gonna do the Rock Creek Trail instead. There's also 2.7 miles and then we could take the other road connector trail um, coming back. So we're thinking that might be about a five mile loop. We're done. What are these? Well, I hope you can hear me. We had to take the mic off because it's raining. 
but blueberries as far as the eye can see and they look ripe I'm gonna pick some yummy oh yummy who needs to bring extra snacks when you can pick blueberries oh yummy yeah so these are soft a lot of the ones that we saw on the trail so far were hard still yeah mm. Oh yeah. Oops, I lost one. These are delicious. I'm happy. Oh, you mean I should pick them for you too? Yes. Okay, there you go. Because I love you. <laughs> we had the cutest little interaction you saw just now. <laughs> some baby ermine. And we got some good video and photo. They're, They're about, so cute. They're about that long, plus a little short tail about that long. So we're walking by, we see little flashes. Then we stop, there's this little hole in the ground. And I think the babies were really curious because they kept coming out, you know, fairly close to us. But we stayed back and, and put our camera on, cell phone on, uh, extreme telephoto. And, uh, but yeah, they were super cute and really curious about us. So that and the blueberry picking was the best part of this trail. And you hear cars now, so we're on the, the roadside trail, and this one goes between the, the dog kennels, which I don't think are open, uh, which is kind of a big draw when you're visiting Denali National Park. And then that connects that to the visitor center, so we're heading back to the parking lot right now. Yay! I'm glad we didn't see bears or moose on this kind of trail. But little baby ermine. Baby ermine and... <laughs> Lots of different kind of mushrooms and dogwood and all kinds. Yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff. Lots of fauna. Yeah, flora. lots of fauna. Flora, flora and fauna. <laughs> With little baby urban. <laughs> Most Alaskans refer to this area around the entrance to, to Denali National Park. And this is a whole collection of gift shops and uh, restaurants and big hotels that are usually only open for about May to September. And it is a complete ghost town. There's hardly anything that's open at all. I love the scenery. There's walking. Anyway, Great Alaska Salmon Bank. World famous Denali Salmon Bank is up there, and that's like a big touristy thing and people love it but that's closed and lots of signs saying hibernating for the season there's literally nobody here in a sunday it's weird weird it's like all the buildings are abandoned and the ravens have taken over it makes it even creepier <laughs>